Because see, what you don't understand is, every time you see one of them young men with the little man bags, they got the 40 Glocks, nine millimeter pistol. I told you when I was 17, I had a nine millimeter pistol looking for somebody to kill. That's why, I, that's why over the years you keep hearing me stress the importance of disciple versus just being a believer. When I'm a believer and I receive Christ, I accept what he did for me. But when I'm a disciple, because of what he did for me, I am compelled to go. I'm compelled to occupy. I'm compelled to reach. Greetings and welcome to the Grow to Go Christian Center broadcast. I am Assistant Pastor Marcus Smith. I want to thank you for today uh, joining us. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to right there where you are to hear what the word of the Lord will be to you today. I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, your pens, your notepads, your tablets, your electronic devices, whatever you need to take notes because the Lord has a word for you. I've already prayed today, so what we're going to do is we're going to go right into our praise and worship, and then after that, the next voice you will hear will be my own ministering the word.
Amen, amen. We pray that the song that you just heard has ministered to your heart, has opened your heart, and you are ready to hear and receive the word of God today. Everyone okay? Yes. You ready to hear from the Lord today? Yes. You're going to hear from the Lord. You're not going to hear from me. Amen. amen. So let's go ahead and open our Bibles to three opening passages of Scripture. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 28. We're going to look at... Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to look at Luke chapter 19. Matthew 28, 2 Corinthians 5, and Luke chapter 19. When you have Matthew 28, say, I have it. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Matthew 28, starting at verse number 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, or all authority, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even till the end of the world. Amen. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to start at verse number 17. Are we there? And it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Let's turn over to Luke 19. Luke 19, and we're going to start at verse number 11. When you have it, say, I have it. Are we there? All right. Starting at verse 11, it says, and, a, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered unto them ten pounds. And he said unto them, Occupy. Till I come. But his citizens hated him. And sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded those servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man, everyone say every man, every. had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound has gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well done, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a, in a very little. Have thou authority over what? Ten cities. So he goes from managing money to managing cities. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And he said, likewise unto him, be thou over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here's your pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man, thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. 
And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knew I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money unto the bank, that at my coming I might have received, I might have required mine own with what? With what? Or interest. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath, been, which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that, hath he, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. Title of this message. Go and occupy. Subtitle, It's Time to Occupy. Go and occupy. It's time to occupy. I'm going to give you my, my uh, purpose and goal real slow because it's a lot. purpose of this teaching is to recalibrate, R-E-C-A-L-I-B-R-A-T-E, -E, to recalibrate the focus of this local assembly back to the mandate and mission of the Great Commission. To recalibrate the focus of this local assembly back to the mandate of the Great Commission. To recalibrate the focus. I gave you an acronym in a teaching before for the word focus. It means follow one course until successful. To recalibrate the focus of this local assembly back to the mandate and mission of the Great Commission. The goal is to realign our priorities to the vision of G2GCC through reaching the lost, preaching the gospel, making disciples, and reconciling men back to Jesus and advancing the kingdom of God in this region. I'll read the whole thing all over again. I want to make sure everyone gets this. The goal is to realign our priorities. Everyone say my priority. To the vision of G2GCC. You don't have to repeat everything. Through reaching the lost. Through preaching the gospel. Through making disciples, reconciling men back to God or back to Jesus, and advancing the kingdom of God in this region. I'll read that one more time. To realign our priorities to the vision of G2GCC through reaching the lost, preaching the gospel, Making disciples, reconciling men back to Jesus, and advancing the kingdom of God in this region. How are we going to do that? This is going to be a two-part message. First, we're going to be dealing with what does it mean to go? What does it mean to go? What does it mean to be sent? Third, we're going to talk about what does it mean to occupy? And we're going to deal with a couple of other things. 
let me start off by saying a couple of things. Go back to the purpose. When you look at the, pur the, word, uh, the purpose, the first word I gave you was recalibrate. Recalibrate means to re-examine one's thinking. To re-examine one's plan and to reevaluate or re-examine one's system of values for the purpose of correcting it in accordance with a new understanding or new purpose. To re-examine one's thinking. To re-examine my plans. To re-examine my system of values. Or what's my value system? And correcting it in accordance with a new understanding or new purpose. I gave you another word, I gave you the word mandate. What is a mandate? A mandate is a command or authorization to act in a particular way. It is a command. Everyone say command. command. Or authorization. Say authorization. authorization. To act in a particular way. There was another word I gave you in that purpose, mission. Mission refers to a sending or a being sent for some duty or purpose. It is sending or being sent for some duty or purpose. It also means an important goal or purpose that is accompanied by strong conviction, strong calling, strong vocation. And then the last phrase I gave you was the Great Commission, evangelizing, discipleship or disciple making, and reconciling nations back to Jesus. That's a tall order. Amen. So let's get into, let's, let, let me give you something. Holy Spirit is already rearranging my message. It's his message. <laughs> I wanna give you some things to think about. Um, couple things. First, a few days ago, I had a conversation with a brother in this church, and he said something to me that was interesting. He said he took his wife to a um, conference or a seminar. It was some sort of conference or seminar for women. I believe it was women entrepreneurs, women business owners. And all these women were talking about the successes that they were having in their businesses. And in the process, um, all of the women were giving God the glory for the success in their business. And they were talking about the Holy Spirit helped me do this and the Holy Spirit helped me do that and was telling me this and leading me to do this. And there was a young man uh, in his early to mid thirties. That's a millennial. And he was, he was like, excuse me. I may not be telling the story completely correct, but this is the gist. He was like, excuse me. I don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all talking about this Holy Ghost stuff and giving God the glory. What does that have to do with business? He was an entrepreneur himself. And he couldn't understand why are they giving God the glory. Who is this God that you're giving glory to? And why, how is that related? Another situation. I had a conversation yesterday with a friend of mine who is in the funeral business. And we were talking about some things and he said some things to me that was very interesting. He said, and I want you to write these things down. I'm gonna give you some numbers. Write down the number 70. Write down the number 500 plus. Write down 14,700. 
and write down 170,000 plus. What was the first number I gave you? 70 represents the number of homicides that happens in St. Louis every month. Average. What was the second number I gave you? 500 plus. That's the number of homicides that take place in St. Louis County, not including St. Charles County. Every month. What was the third number I gave you? That's the number of people who homicides that take place in the state of Missouri every month. This is a gentleman who works in the funeral industry. He says every, every type of death that takes place, you're not going to hear about it on the news. What was the last number I gave you? That's how many in the St. Louis metropolitan region that die annually. Now those numbers are not all homicides. Some are people who die in hospitals, hospice, car crashes, drug overdoses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why am I giving you those numbers? What's the title of this message? Go and occupy. It's time to occupy. Here's a few other stats along the same lines. 10 top cities with the highest murder rates in 2023. Guess which city is at the top of the list? St. Louis, Missouri. Number two, Baltimore, Maryland. They average 51 murders per month. Number three, New Orleans, Louisiana, 40 murders per month. Number four, Detroit, Michigan, 39 homicides per month. Number five, Cleveland, Ohio, 33 homicides per month. Number six, Las Vegas, Nevada, 31 homicides per month. That's like one per day. Kansas City, Missouri, 31 per month. Number eight, Memphis, Tennessee, 27 homicides per month. Number eight, Memphis, uh, excuse me, Memphis, Tennessee, 27 per month. Number nine, Newark, New Jersey, 25 per month. And number 10, which you would have thought would have been number one, is Chicago, Illinois, at 24 per month. What's the title of this message? It's time to occupy. Let's look at the first main point in one. What does it mean to go? Let's look at Matthew chapter five. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 10, excuse me. We're gonna look at Matthew 10 and we're gonna look at Luke chapter 10. Matthew 10 and Luke 10. Matthew 10 starting at verse number five. When you have it, see I have it. Matthew 10, starting at verse 5. It says, These twelve Jesus sent forth. Wait a minute. These twelve Jesus did what? Wait a minute. Let's start at verse 1. Let's start at verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Do you realize when someone engages in murder, they got an unclean spirit? They got a spirit of murder on them. I know what that's like because I got bullied as a kid. And because I got bullied as a kid, something on the inside of me began to rise up. When I was 17 years old, I worked at KFC. And there was a gentleman who was about 10 years my senior. He uh, was from the South, he was very superstitious. And he, one day I was in the kitchen and I was sweeping because I was a cook and I was sweeping and everything like that. And he happened to walk in the area where I was sweeping and the trash blew over his feet. And he said, spit on the broom. I said, what? He said, spit on the broom. And he grabbed it and spit on the broom. I was like, what in the world? <laughs> so then I'm like, I'm using that to sweep before I grab another broom. So I'm sweeping. And I was like, hmm. So I'm sweeping and he moves into another area. He said, man, don't, 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 don't sweep in my area. I said, man, you, I'm sweeping, I'm cleaning. So I'm 17 years old. And now it's kind of getting amusing to me. 
So now, I purposely sleep in, in his area. He said, man, you think I'm playing? And he hit me with an open hand. I'm 17, he's 26. He hit me in the, with an open hand. Short, muscular guy. And he said, I'm gonna kill him! And he grabbed a butcher knife. That quick, he wanted to kill me. I grabbed a crowbar, I grabbed, and they hit him, somebody grabbed him and grabbed me, and they separated us, and they made sure that we didn't work together for about six months. But that day, I went to my cousin, who was a few years older than me, who had just gotten out of the military. I said, this guy jumped on me at work. He pulled a knife on me. He grabbed a butcher knife trying to get me. He said, you got $150? He said, you got $150? I said, yeah. He said, come over to my house. So I went to his house. I gave him $150. He gave me a nine millimeter pistol with a case of hollow tip bullets. He said, handle your business. I took that gun, put it in my bag, went home. My mother never knew I had it. And every time I went to work, I was looking for him. Because the spirit of murder went from him to me. Because now, I said, I want him to say something. I said in my heart, I want him to say something to me. I hope he say something to me. Because I will kill him. I was 17. Why am I telling you that? I just read some, to you some statistics. But for the grace of God, I wouldn't be standing here today. If my mother wasn't praying for me, if my grandmother wasn't praying for me, if the saints weren't praying for me or other young people. Because see, when you don't have a father in the household, when you don't have anyone imparting it to you, discipling you, mentoring you, that same spirit of murder might get on, might get on you, or might get on your children, might get on your nieces, nephews, cousins, and grandbabies, or your neighbor's kids. He gave them, and he, he called unto him, we're back in verse 1, and he went, and, excuse me, and when he had called unto them his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the 12 apostles were the first, are these. First, Simon, who was called Peter, Andrew his brother, James, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican or tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and uh, Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Verse 5, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He told them where to go. Before he sent them and told them to go, he empowered them. He first empowered, excuse me, first he called them, he discipled them, he empowered them, then he sent them. Look at Luke chapter 10. Same account, slightly different. Luke 10, start, what did I say? Luke 10 and Luke 9. Let me make sure. Okay, we'll start at verse, we'll look at Luke 9, and then we'll look at Luke 10. Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. So he gave them power, which is ability, is the word dunamis. And he gave them authority, which is the word exousia, authority. And that power and authority is over all what? All devils. And to what? Cure diseases. Now, who did he give this power and authority to? Who? His disciples. 
because he wanted something to take place. He didn't give them power or authority for no reason. Verse 2, and he did what? He did what? He did what? Sent them to do what? Preach the kingdom of God and to what? Heal the sick. Look at Luke 10. Starting at verse 1. Luke 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. Watch this. And did what? Sent them how? Two and two or two by two before his face into every city and place where the he himself would come. Verse 2, therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. He didn't say that people would go. He said that he would send. He didn't say pray that people would go. He said pray people that would be sent. What does it mean to go? The word go in the Greek, Strong's Concordance Greek, is the number 4198. It's the word, it's spelled P-O-R-E-U-O. Again, it's Strong's Greek Concordance, New Testament, 4198. It's spelled P-O-R-E-U-O. It means to depart. It means to walk. It means to go one's way. So to depart, to walk, to go one's way. It also means, here's an interesting word, transfer. Transfer. Go also means to pursue the journey on which one has entered and to continue on one's journey. Let me see that again. It means to pursue the journey on which one has entered. Has anyone received Christ? If you've received Christ as your Lord and Savior, you say, I believe in Jesus, or I'm a follower of Jesus. But when you say that you are a follower of Jesus, you're saying something specific. You're saying that you are a disciple. And when you are a disciple, you are a pupil. You are a learner. You are a student. You are a follower. You are an imitator. You are an adherent to the teacher and his teachings. Why am I saying that? Because one of the words or one of the definitions for go is to follow one and become his adherent. To go means to be a follower and to become his adherent. One who follows one who, you, you follow a teacher and you adhere to his teachings. That's an adherent. So when we talk about what does it mean to go, here's, here's, my, here's my summation of that. Go is a command from Jesus. A commandment from who? Go is a commandment from Jesus to those that will follow him. And be his disciple. And to pursue the journey he has ordained and sent them to accomplish. Go is a commandment from Jesus. To those that will follow him. That means it's a choice. To follow Jesus is a choice. It's not just I believe in him. That means to be born again. When you believe on the Lord Jesus, you become, and you confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you become saved. But that's totally different than being a disciple. A disciple has work to do. A disciple has been empowered. A disciple has been mentored.
See, I know this is kind of, this is not foreign to your ears, but if you go back to what, I, if you go back to what we talked about in the purpose to recalibrate the focus of this local assembly back to the mandate and the mission of the Great Commission. We got to get back to that. I gave you several reasons why. I gave you 70 reasons. I gave you 500 reasons. I gave you 14,700 reasons. I gave you 170,000 plus reasons. I told you about the top 10 cities with the highest homicide rates in the United States. And that's just dealing with homicide. We didn't deal with human trafficking. We haven't done with drug abuse, fentanyl crisis. We haven't talked about the division that's happening in our country. We haven't talked about the racial divide, the economic divide, the potential of a shift in our economic system, how everything is about to change. Oh, little tidbit. Has anyone ever heard of Ask Jesus? Amen. Has anyone heard of AI Jesus? There are people who are the same age as the young man that I told you about in their late 20s, early 30s, who have become tech influencers and tech pioneers. Some of them have created artificial intelligence that is supposed to allow you to talk to Jesus and have a deeper intimacy with Jesus. AI Jesus and Ask Jesus. You ask it questions and in real time it responds to you. Why am I talking about this? Because that same age group is the age group that's not in church right now. That same age group is the same age group that's in nightclubs and strip clubs and bars and hookah bars while you're asleep, they out partying. <clears throat> What's the title of this message? Because see, what you don't understand is every time you see one of them young men with the little man bags, they got their 40 Glocks, 9 millimeter pistol. I told you when I was 17, I had a 9 millimeter pistol looking for somebody to kill. That's why Mother Murray, we were so thankful when your children and your whole family came in on that one day because your prayers was availing much and you saw the harvest of all those young people that came in one day. That should be an encouragement to anybody. You have a son, a daughter, grandson, grandchild, whoever, who's way out there. Keep praying. Don't stop praying for them. Keep speaking the word to them. Keep speaking the word over them. And whenever you have an opportunity, you start talking to them. Start building a relationship with them. Start ministering the word to them. See, if this word is, if this word, if you're a member of this church and what the Spirit of God is saying to you, you might need to check your heart. If you, if you have the mentality, that's not my problem. I told you before, it's going to do this. It's going to knock at your front door. I'm going to give this to you again. What does go mean? Go is a command from Jesus to those that will follow him to be his disciple and to pursue the journey he has ordained and sent them to accomplish, which involves reaching the lost, reaching sinners. Main point two. What does it mean to be sent? <clears throat> Before I get into that, our pastor's in the house. If you have been a part of this ministry for any period of time, you know his testimony. You know that he was a police officer in Los Angeles. Correct me if I'm wrong, but L.A. was one of the cities that I mentioned, wasn't it? No, L.A. wasn't on there. It's not on that list. 
but LA is home of the Crips and Bloods. <laughs> LA is the home of the entertainment industry. And he talked about how he was a mean person. I remember we went to Palm Desert, California for men's, uh, men's advance. And I met some gentlemen at that men's advance in 2003. At the time, I still had my locks. <laughs> and we were in Palm Desert, California. And I'm seeing these big old guys, six, seven, six, nine, seven feet tall. Big old guys, rough looking guys. And they said, you from St. Louis? I said, yeah. They said, you a, you a Dr. Harvey? I said, yeah. They said, you got a man of God right there. He said, because gangsters and thugs were scared of him. Big old 300 plus pounds. They were scared of him. And to see him go from someone who people were intimidated by to people who men honored and respected as a man of God, all because he chose to obey and he was... He was what? Sin. What does it mean to be sin? We're going to, let's get into that. Look at Matthew, chap Matthew chapter uh, 9, Matthew 9. I'm going to take my time with this family because something has to happen with the body of Christ. And I can't speak for any other church. I can only talk about the church where I have been mentored and discipled and been grown. We got work to do. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. We read a similar account before, but in Matthew chapter 9, verse 38, it says, I'm sorry, verse 35, thank you. It says, and Jesus went about all the cities, all the what? And villages. What did he do? He was what? What was he doing? Teaching in their synagogue. And I was like, why is he teaching the synagogue? Because everything starts first with spiritual leadership. Amen. We are expecting the uh, president, <clears throat> Supreme Court, Congress, legislators, law enforcement to solve the problems. <laughs> Jesus didn't start with them. He went to the synagogues or the church churches in the cities and in the villages he was teaching excuse me and he preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people why is that important because what he was teaching and what he was preaching he was also demonstrating one of the things that I've come to learn is this when people don't see what we say come to pass, they begin to question our God. Doesn't matter whether or not if we have some work we gotta work on, but they judge our God by how we act or by what's not happening. Verse 36, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with what? Compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no pastor. They didn't have someone who was teaching them the word, line upon line, precept upon precept, here little, there little. They didn't have someone who's speaking into their life, providing correction through the ministry of the word. They didn't have someone who was operating under the leading of the Holy Spirit to read their mail to let you know God is in this place. And the reason why God is revealing this to you is because God wants to get your attention. To let you know that he knows where you live. He knows your name, your address, your social security number, the number of... I had some. <laughs> he said, they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Verse 37. Then he said unto, watch this. He said it to who? His disciples church the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are I want you to think about this 
How do you know that the harvest is plenteous? I just gave you a whole list of reasons. People operate according to their way of thinking. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 and 16 both make a statement that says, there is a way that seems right to a man. But at the end of that thing, it produces death, it produces destruction. It produces what? What did we start off talking about? We talked about the number, we talked about 70, we talked about 500 plus, we talked about 14,700, and we talked about 170,000 plus. People are operating according to their own way of thinking. And it is producing death. Physical death. We just got last night on the prayer chain a request to pray for a family, a pastor, his daughter was killed in a shooting yesterday in this city. Stop saying it's not your problem. Stop saying that's not my ministry. If you say that go and occupying is not your ministry, I question whether you know Jesus. So are you judging people? No, 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 no. That's why, I, that's why over the years you keep hearing me stress the importance of disciple versus just being a believer. When I'm a believer and I receive Christ, I accept what he did for me. But when I'm a disciple, because of what he did for me, I am compelled to go. I'm compelled to occupy. I'm compelled to reach. Look at Acts chapter 13. What does it mean to be sent? <clears throat> Forgive me for being a little excited. <clears throat> Acts chapter 13. Just going to read a couple verses. I'm starting at verse 1. When you have it, say, I have it. It says, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manan which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work wherein unto I have Call them. Remember when we talked about being called and being chosen? When you're called, you're invited to be a part of a banquet. When you're chosen, you're selected out of the group. So he says, separate to me. Separate Paul or Barnabas and Silas for the work that I have what? Called them. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has been called to seek and save the lost. Remember S-A-R? Do you, how many remember S-A-R? S-A-R stands for search and rescue. If you don't think that search and rescue is serious, think about what just happened in Maui. There's still hundreds of people that are yet unaccounted for. Well over a thousand people, it is believed, were burned alive. Did all those folks deserve to die like that? I don't know. We don't know. But in Luke, I believe it's in Luke chapter 18, he talks about the people, or Luke 13, where he talks about the people, a tower of Siloam fell on people and 13 people died. And he says, did they deserve to die like this? He said, but unless you repent, you may die the same way. Do you think all the people who got shot and killed in St. Louis, the 70 a month, the 500 plus in St. Louis County, the 114,000, excuse me, the 14,000 plus across this, uh, 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 the whole state, or the 170,000, do you think that they were worse people than you? Verse 
verse 3. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they did what? Sent them, sent them away. So they being sent forth by who? By the Holy Ghost departed into Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. What does it mean to sin? The word sin is a Greek word, Strong's New Testament Greek, 649. It's the word apostolos, or apostolo. A-P-O-S-T-E-L-L-O. -L -L That's A-P-O-S-T-E-L-L-O. -L -L it's where we get the word apostle. It means to order one to go to an appointed place. To order one to go to an appointed place. To order one to go to what? Our pastor told us the Lord told him to go to St. Louis, an appointed place. It means to go to an appointed place, to send forth or to send out. That's the definition. Here's the summary of that. To send or to be sent means the act of deploying or sending out disciples by Christ's authority into designated territories to accomplish a task. Let me say it again. Send, to send or to, to send or sent is the act of deploying or sending out disciples of Christ. Excuse me. Sending out disciples by Christ's authority. Let me clarify that. To send means to the act of deploying or sending out disciples by Christ's authority into designated territories to accomplish a task. And that task is to preach the gospel, evangelize, seek and save the lost, to make disciples, to reconcile men back to Jesus. And with that, I gotta quit because I'm out of time. This message was not something that I had necessarily prepared for. I was prepared, but I hadn't prepared for it. Elder Lewis st stood on this platform last week, and he stood right over here. He said, it's time to occupy. And when he said that, boom, hit my chest. I had four other different things I was preparing to teach. Four other things that I was preparing to teach. Holy Spirit said, you need to get back on this. We got to get back on this. Why did the Lord send us to this location? Why did he send us to this location, a school building? We got plenty of classrooms where we can teach the word, minister the word, and begin to disciple people. Not to follow after us, but to conform their life, their lifestyle, their mentality to reflect and be conformed to the image of Christ. If this word is disturbing you, it should. If you feel disturbed, if you feel that this is disrupting your life, guess what? That's exactly what happened to our pastor. That's what happened to every one of us. The Lord stepped in and disrupted our lives. For a purpose. And so if you in the listening audience on the internet, if you have been, if this message has touched your heart, if it has arrested your attention, I'm glad you're listening to the Holy Spirit. And he wanted to get your attention for a specific reason. He wants you to come into his kingdom. He wants you to receive his son, Jesus, the savior of the world, the Lord of our lives. Because without him, you have made an appointment to go to a designated place that was not prepared for you, but will gladly welcome you. It's called hell. It says hell is, oh, is con consistently growing and expanding. Because hell was created for the devil and his angels, but if you reject Jesus, 
the only hope for the world, the only hope for you, the only hope for mankind, then that you have just made your reservation. And you have an appointed time. Whenever you take your last breath, you go from this arena into hell like that. So I want to give you an opportunity to make a wise quality decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. It simply begins with you praying a simple prayer from your heart out of your mouth. If you decide to do this, just repeat these words after me. Say, Dear God in heaven, I come to you with a need to acknowledge Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You said in your word, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I would be saved. I believe Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for my sin, who was raised from the dead for my justification, and I receive him now as my Lord and Savior. You also said in your word, if I ask for Holy Spirit, you would give him to me. I ask you now, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me, guide me, direct my life. Reveal to me your plan and purpose for my life. And Father, I thank you. I believe I'm saved. I know I'm saved for what Jesus has done for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer from your heart and said it with your mouth, we want to be the first ones to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Let's celebrate it, family. Hallelujah. This is what it sounds like in heaven. The hosts of heaven are rejoicing over you. It says all the hosts of heaven rejoice over one soul that comes into the kingdom. And we want to be the first ones to say welcome to the kingdom. Hallelujah. At the bottom of your screen, you should see an email, you should see a website address, which is g2gcc.org. You should also see our phone number, 314-867-1894. Please give us a call, let us know, I received Jesus. Or go on our website and indicate, I, just send us a message, I received Jesus today. We wanna to celebrate with you. Welcome. Until our next broadcast, my name is Marcus Smith. I'm one of the assistant pastors here at Go to Go Christian Center. And let me pray a prayer of benediction over you. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. We'll see you on our next broadcast. And until then, we bid you shalom.